your horse riding and your horse riding confidence by using self-hypnosis. Well, that's what I'm sharing with you in today's live stream. In this video, uh, I'm going to be explaining how you can, how you, you already do hypnotize yourself, but how you can use self-hypnosis to feel calm and confident and be successful with um, whatever it is you want to be as a horse rider. Uh, if this is your first time joining me, I'm Ann Gage, the horse riding confidence coach, and I help anxious horse riders get back in the saddle with confidence and joy. And helping me today is one of my feline friends, Molly. I'm also the author of the book, Confident Rider, Confident Horse, and it's available. You can get the PDF version on my uh, website, which is an instant download. And uh, the link to, if you prefer the paperback copy, is also there. And my, my website is confidenthorsemanship.com. So, what is hypnosis and how are you doing it every day? Because you are, we all do. Um, hypnosis is really, um, anytime you go into a trance state, anytime you're dreaming or daydreaming, Anytime you're turning your focus inwards, you're using hypnosis. It's um, having a, using your imagination, whether that's in a good way or a not so helpful way, is doing hypnosis. Doing a visualization is doing a hypnosis. And there are some, some key parts to, um, to being able to do self-hypnosis successfully, but I wanted to take you through just a quick little um, example of how what you believe affects how successful this self-hypnosis will be. So if you take your hands and just as if you're, you're making a prayer and you push your hands together and you start believing and saying to yourself, my hands are stuck, my hands are stuck, my hands are stuck, my hands are stuck. They're really stuck. They're like super glued together stuck. And if you really believe that, and believe it, believe it really intensely that your hands are stuck together, just keep looking at your hands and believing that. And as you believe that, try to take your hands apart. And if you're really believing it, you'll find that your hands won't come apart. Okay, now, just allow your hands to come apart. So some of you may have done that and discovered that, well, my hands come apart. What is this nonsense? Of course I can take my hands apart. Of course they're not really glued together. But that's what you believe, and so that's your experience. Those of you who believed that my hands are stuck together, they're really stuck together, they felt like they were stuck together because that was what you were believing, so that's what you experienced. And that's basically what we do with hypnotizing ourselves. We focus on a particular experience, whether that's in the past or in the future, and or even a present experience if we're having a really strong emotional response to it, becomes a form of self-hypnosis. So we can scare ourselves. Hey, Loretta. We can scare ourselves when we imagine something happening in the future and we really put ourselves into that. So we see ourselves doing it or we, we picture ourselves doing it and we evoke uh, an image of it not going well. We evoke the emotions of anxiety or fear. And so, and if we focus on that, for long enough and feel those emotions for long enough, then our unconscious mind goes, oh, okay, I get it. When we're in that situation, this is how we're, we're supposed to respond. It's a scary situation, obviously, so we are supposed to feel anxious about that. And that's a way that we use self-hypnosis negatively. So if you're thinking about even something outside of, of horses, for example, if you're thinking about doing a presentation, or going for a job interview, um, or horse-related, going out on a hack, or going to a horse show, and every time you, you 
think of that, that's happening on a specific date at a specific time, and you think about it and start to feel anxious, you're hypnotizing yourself, you're, you're training your unconscious mind that that is a scary situation. And when you get find yourself in that situation, you will feel anxious, you will be scared. So one thing you can do about that is when you catch yourself doing that kind of self-hypnosis, when you're projecting into the future and imagining an event happening or situation happening, notice it and stop. Use that big, if you've listened to my, me talk at all before, you've heard me mention, just imagine a big stop sign going up, hear the word stop, see a big, big red traffic light, whatever it is that works for you, and stop that thought process, stop that imagery in its tracks, and replace it with something more positive. Now, how do you use self-hypnosis effectively to prepare yourself for an upcoming event uh, or to see yourself riding a particular uh, movement perhaps really well is first of all the first step is you want to do it when you're feeling relaxed and calm and again if you've been following my my lives um, my videos I've talked about this before about the 7-eleven breath so your exhale is longer than your inhale <clears throat> excuse me for a moment doing that long exhale helps to calm us down you can use your your hakalau your peripheral vision exercise again I've talked about this in other videos and if you combine those two so that sort of daydreamy staring off into a distance feel and combine that with the 7-eleven breath that puts you into a really relaxed calm state and the more deeply relaxed and calm you're feeling as you use your imagination of you seeing yourself doing the thing uh, or being in this particular situation, the more effective it will be. You need to believe it. You need to feel it. The emotions of it really evoke strong emotions, the positive emotions of this particular situation or event. Hey, Sue from Spain, where it's very, very hot. Um, so when you believe it, and you feel it, and you see it, and you're experiencing that starting from a very calm place, and just like a daydream, you can do it with your eyes open, or you're, if you're staring off into, into space, you can do it with your eyes closed. You start to create for your unconscious mind a belief that we're going to feel good. This is a very positive thing that we want to be doing, or you want to be doing. So you're creating a very strong belief about a future experience. Now, if you're doing something that you've got, you've had negative experiences from in the past and, and possibly uh, almost a traumatic um, event, you might need some help releasing the negative emotions connected to that memory before you're able to, to progress really well with, with the self-hypnosis part of it. And that's something I'm able to, to help you with if you need help doing that. Um, so basically, we I made some notes because I wanted to be sure that I, I covered um, all of these points with you. So um, Getting back to whether it's positive or negative self-hypnosis, whether it's beneficial or it's not helping you so much, think of it like classical conditioning for your unconscious mind. You know the Pavlov's dog story? If you know about Pavlov's dogs, type yes in the comments. Um, so that the dogs basically, you know, um, there would be a bell ring, the food was presented, the dogs would salivate, and eventually the bell rings, the dogs salivate. So that, that's a um, synopsis of classical conditioning. And we sort of do that to our unconscious minds in a positive way or a negative way. And that's what I was explaining about imagining a future event and feeling tense and anxious about it sets up that classical conditioning for your unconscious mind. Um, so when you imagine a future event, it's really important that you're imagining it in a positive way with really feeling those emotions, really seeing yourself doing it 
being in the, uh, the, the, the picture or the movie that you're imagining, putting yourself in it, and being really, really calm, in a really, really calm state of mind as you begin that process. Now, when you do hypnosis, um, again, it's, it's a trance state, and we go into trance states often, and, and one of the greatest examples for those of us who drive is driving somewhere, a familiar route particularly, and sort of blanking out for a portion of that, that drive. If you've ever done that, put yes in the comments. <laughs> um, and, and what's happened there is you've gone into a trance state, so your unconscious mind knows this route, knows um, how to do this without thinking. And so your your conscious mind can kind of shut off for a little bit. But if something were to happen, there was a that you needed to come back to consciousness, it would happen like that. And that's what happens with, with hypnosis. Your conscious mind is always there. And if there is a noise or something that um, distracts you, you will come out of that hypnosis. You can bring yourself out of it whenever you feel like it. So there's lots of people experiencing those those trance states. So that's what I'm talking about. That's that's a hypnosis. So when you can get yourself, you practice putting yourself into that hypnotic state um, with an intention, an, an intentional um, outcome that you want to bring about. Um, then it's really, really powerful. And there's one other thing I wanted to say, and I'm forgetting what it was. Oh yes, the repetition part. So you you create your 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 hypnosis, and if you repeat it, you need to repeat it. And this is what happens with um, how we scare ourselves, because you can think about something once and th imagine it being scary, or replay um, a negative memory um, of a scary situation. You replay it once. And it doesn't have any lasting impact. But when you replay that memory or your positive hypnosis over and over 10 times, 30 times, then it has an impact on your unconscious brain or your unconscious mind. So you really want to have, uh, for this to, for your self hypnosis to be helpful and improve your writing so you can picture yourself doing a particular thing in writing um, to help you with feeling calm about doing a particular thing in writing. Then you want to be in a calm state. So your 7-Eleven breathing, your peripheral vision, your hakalau. You, uh, so you go into that sort of daydreaming state, very calm. You want to see yourself doing the activity or being in the situation and feeling very positive, um, empowering emotions. So joy, uh, contentment, happiness, elation, excitement, all of those things. Um, bring those in to your hypnosis. Okay. If you have any questions or comments, pop them in now and I will address them and I will have a sip of my licorice tea while I wait for them to come up. And um, I just mentioned that I do have some spaces available. I, I only take on three one-to-one -one clients a month for my 30-day confidence coaching uh, program. And uh, so I'm booking people in for September, which is only a week away. And uh, that program for 30 days, we meet on, on Zoom once a week for your, your coaching call. I take you through some really um, interesting techniques using NLP and a little bit of hypnosis. Yes, we can do it through Zoom. And uh, you get recording of, of the call. You have access to me through Facebook Messenger or email in between the calls. And at the end of your program in often before the end of the program, you're feeling much more calm and confident about riding. So if you have any sort of traumatic um, memories about riding that are holding you back, that you're having a hard time releasing the, the memories or the emotions from, that's something we work through. If you need help with some setting some goals and achieving um, some success, whatever that is for you in, in the future, that's another 
thing I can help you with. So if you want information about that, just send me a message um, and uh, I will get you more information about that. So I am not seeing any questions pop up. So once again, I hope you found this video helpful. Please do give it a like, share it, tag a friend who might find the information helpful and I will catch you. And if you're watching the replay, forgot to mention, do uh, pop your comments or questions in and I will come back and answer them. If you want to get notified of when I'm going live, then make sure you've gone into the notifications and uh, or while you're on here, just uh, you, you should be able to request to be notified when I go live. Oh, all right. Here come the questions. Trying hard to keep more momentum and riding more regularly. Inspiration to ride is an issue. I struggle with motivation. So the question is, Loretta, what's behind that um, lack of motivation? Because there'll be something driving that. Um, so just asking yourself, uh, and if you don't know the answer, sometimes asking these questions just before you go to sleep at night, your unconscious mind might pop the answer up for you. When you wake up the next day, you can journal on these types of questions and see what comes up. It's another way of letting your unconscious mind um, get the, the message to you about what's really behind that. Uh, Jane, I guess that's where the visualization techniques go hand in hand. Yes. Um, and it, it is. Visualization is a form of self self hypnosis and again you want to be careful you want to be doing that when you're calm and and repeating it you're welcome Anne. happy you could join me i loretta have ordered a real webcam <laughs> because i know the camera on my laptop is not great so uh webcams if you didn't know thanks to covid are um out of stock so mine is back ordered and hopefully sometime in september i will have a bright shiny new webcam which will make these videos a little bit prettier um okay i hope that answered your questions loretta and and jane and um i'll just see because Sometimes these, oh, I should show you the other side of my mug. I'll just wait and see if any more comments pop up. I don't know because my camera's fuzzy. If you can see, that's our aim for riding our horses, right? Calm, confident, and connected. Okay. Well, once again, thank you for joining me. Um, I will be back next Monday with another live, and uh, I hope to see you there. If you have any topics you would like me to cover, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer, then send them to me. You can pop them in the comments or send me a PM, and uh, I will perhaps use one of them for a future live stream. All right. We'll see you again next week.